welcome you back to the front page here on UTTV. And uh, last week, a lot of us were really inspired by Diana Nyad and her record swim from Cuba to Florida. 64 years old, 100 plus mile swim, 53 hours in the water. By the way, finally accomplished something she'd been trying to accomplish for like the last 30 years. However, as the days went on there after the swim, a lot of people now are starting to question the numbers. They don't seem to make a lot of sense. Her, her swim, 100 plus miles, 53 hours, shark infested waters, people in the long distance swimming community, yes, there is a long distance swimming community, they want to know, did she really do the swim or was it possibly assisted? Did she rest on a boat? Was she being pulled along by a boat? Skeptics point to a 10 mile stretch where Naya, uh, where Naya apparently sped up to twice her average speed. So now those that are questioning this, they want her GPS. Uh, they want the, uh, all the data to be released. And Nyad's team has promised a point by point response. So again, very inspiring to many, uh, fraudulent to some others. Here to have that discussion is Grace Vanderbeel. Now Grace is a world-class distance swimmer. She last year set the record swimming from Catalina back to LA in under seven hours and 30 minutes. She is the world record holder in that swim, not the female world record holder, the world record holder, not to mention she swam all the way around New York. She's, when I say world class, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot to support that. And here is Grace Vanderbilt back in studio this morning. Hi, Grace, how are Hi, you? Hi, good, how are you? Doing great, how's the body recovering? Because if, <laughs> if you don't recall, uh, Grace and her team just swam from Santa Barbara to Point Loma, six person team, and uh, set a world record for a 228 mile swim. How, how are you feeling? <laughs> I feel much better now than I did a week ago. You swam, in, in that uh, swim that you just recently did, uh, every hour uh, somebody else would jump in, so you would swim for an hour and right. then you'd rest for five hours. Exactly. And you swam for a total of about 50 miles, right? Uh, around 55. Okay, 55 miles. Can you even just put your mind into a 100 plus mile swim, given what you've just done? Well, yeah, I mean, that's what we do. I mean, if uh, we make these choices to do these big things and, and we think big and we go for it. And yeah, that's the cool thing about being an open water distance swimmer is you're sitting on one shore and you look at the other shore and you go, oh, I, I think I can swim that. And then now it's, how am I gonna get there? How am I gonna train for it? How am I gonna prepare for it? As far as Diane and I, I'm curious to hear your opinion on this because you have tried to help other swimmers swim from Cuba to Florida, right? I have. Just, just tell me a little bit about that. So uh, Chloe McArdle is a friend of mine. She's from Melbourne, Australia. She attempted a uh, channel rules. Now English channel rules being that she gets just one swimsuit, a cap, a pair of goggles, set of earplugs, that's it. And she attempted to swim from Cuba to Florida in June. But didn't make it. She didn't make it. We got around 11 hours in the swim. Uh, as night fell, it was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen, like something out of an Alfred Hitchcock. What happened? There was the jellyfish by the million. It looked like a blanket, like somebody had thrown a quilt of jellyfish under the surface, and they were just slowly making their way up, and they were just pelting her. And then uh, one at a time, she was just overcome with jellyfish venom. Now, that's what I'm understanding about Nyad's swim, that there are a lot of people in your community that, that are questioning her swim because she was wearing something that was not English Channel's rules. Can you take us Correct. through that? Correct. So um, she was wearing what is called a stinger suit and a, uh, a mask to prevent the jellyfish stings. And traditionally, those, those things are not allowed in any, any channel swims. Is it a, an advantage? I think advantage is, is a double-sided topic. I think it's, it's an advantage in the sense that, yeah, she's not as exposed to the elements. However, is this swim a swim that's impossible without that? Or, or have we just not figured out the time of year or the way? Do we just not have enough data to know when this is the most swimmable type of swim? I'm not sure. But yeah, it's definitely an advantage to not be stung with so, millions so, of jellyfish so, at a so time. So part of the badge of courage of doing this is taking the beating, oh, which yeah. is whatever the ocean might give you. Oh, absolutely. That's the best story. Let me ask you this. Um, as far as the timing of it all, as you've looked at it, again, you've, you've tried to help somebody go across from Cuba to Florida. We've talked a little bit about your record-setting swims, the, the, the hundreds of miles that you yourself have swam. 
do you want to see all the GPS data? Are you questioning Diane Nyad's? Absolutely, so, and yeah. I and I think you should question. I think anytime I th I think anytime you do anything this big, you should allow yourself and be open to questioning. I mean, that should be okay. It should be okay to ask, did you really do this or how? This is a really, really uh, solitary sport. This is a sport where it, it's hard to watch somebody swim for hours at a time, and there's not a whole lot of doubt there. You're usually alone. So yeah, I want to know. And um, recently, they just recently released uh, more of her GPS coordinates to kind of debunk the seven mile an hour supposed spike that she had. But there were other elements of that as well, like after 38 hours of swimming, not taking nutrition, not even a sip of water for seven hours. I mean, any endurance athlete willingly not taking nutrition for seven hours is is, is, is not a good thing. Your kidneys shut down and, and you won't make it. Do you believe that she did this without help? No. I believe she was assisted. And I'm using assisted as specific, like the jellyfish stinger suit, uh, you know, the mask, the, you know, I, I can't believe that she went seven hours without any nutrition whatsoever. Um, I hope all the stars, you know, came in line. I love this story. I mean, this is the greatest never give up story in sports ever, ever. You know, so I, and, but and I, think I would think that someone like yourself, who's a younger person, who has done all these crazy swims right. yourself, has set all these world records, that you would be inspired by her story instead. 100%. But instead, it sounds like you're questioning her rather than being inspired by her. I question, I question the way they're categorizing it. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, you know, I did it. I threw a stinger suit on and wore a mask and I got across that channel, you know, but saying that you did it unassisted. That's, that's where I have the issue with it. And, and your swim uh, from Catalina back to LA, right. seven hours and 27 minutes, uh, a world record. Again, can you put your mind from seven hours and change? Here, here we're watching a little bit of video from your swim. Can you get yourself from 727? I guess ultimately what I'm saying is, when are you gonna go beat Diana Nyad's record? <laughs> Let's go, come on, Gracie. Uh, maybe one of these days, definitely. How soon? I don't know. <laughs> I say go do it. Hey, thanks for your perspective. Really appreciate it. It's a very interesting story.